Ladies and gentlemen, Nick theater because I remember sitting here listening to the orchestra as a little kid kicking my sister way up there in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then when they were showing us the theater, uh, they, they were like going through the whole thing and then they go, and uh, there's the trap door and the front of the stage. And I was like, no, no, hold on a second. What did you just say? <laughs> there's a trap door in this place? Yeah. He's like, yeah, but you won't be needing that. I was like, oh, yes, I will. <laughs> can't tell me there's a trap door and not expect me to go through it. <laughs> oh, man, I cannot believe we made it to summer as a planet. Can you guys believe that? <laughs> I, I got to tell you, when I booked this tour several months ago, I didn't think the planet was going to make it to summer. <laughs> I really didn't. My agent called me. She's like, hey, do you want a tour in the summer? I was like, OK. Can I get paid in advance? <laughs> like, ask yourself honestly, last November, did you think that this planet was gonna make it to July? I thought there was no way. We're in the middle of a pandemic. The world is heating up. We're uh, at the end of a presidential election between a man who had lost his mind and another one who's currently losing it. <laughs> I'll let you guys decide which one's which. <laughs> I think it's more fun that way. Oh, man, but I am excited to be here. I think, I think it's incredible, you know, what science was able to accomplish. You know, you know, back last March, they figured out about the coronavirus, and then nine months later, they had this medicine to help us combat it. I think that's amazing, and science deserves a lot of credit, but I'm a little bit pissed that we still don't have Jurassic Park. Is anybody with me? <laughs> What the hell, science? Where do your priorities lie? Go get a dinosaur right now. I don't need the iPhone 13, I need a T-Rex. I can't believe we don't have one. I that movie is 30 years old. I remember sitting in the audience as a little kid going, yeah, this all makes sense, go, go. What are you waiting for? Go get a mosquito, I don't know what you gotta do. Right? And yet, here we are, 2021, we still don't have a di I, I don't even need a T-Rex, to be honest. Give me a little crappy dinosaur that I can kick. I don't care. <laughs> I don't kick. I just want to be able to Instagram Live me wrestling a Velociraptor. That's all I want. <laughs> I don't think that's too much to ask. I did get vaccinated. You guys get vaccinated here? Yeah. Some people. Some people, other people know. That's okay. That's okay, I understand it, man. I understand the hesitancy. Like, I had to get vaccinated because I need this to survive. I need people to gather in tight spaces and make laugh juice come out of their mouth. <laughs> I need that. So I got the shots, but I understand the, the, the worry about it. I just think it's funny that now we're worried. Now that it's going into our adult arms, we have a lot of questions. A lot of concerns for the doctors. <laughs> now that it's going into the adult arm, we're nervous, because for years we've just been dragging our toddlers, kicking and screaming, <laughs> into the pediatricians, not asking anything. Just, there he is, get him! <laughs> get him, you want me to hold him down for you? Stop wiggling! Stop wiggling, Jeremy! Not asking a single question, the nurse comes in with a tub full of needles. We don't ask to check it. We're just like, what do you got, nine of them? That's two in each arm, two in each leg, one between the toes. Go. <laughs> right? No concern, but now that it's our turn to get it, we're all in the, oh, 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 oh. What, do you have a needle? Well, well what are the long-term side effects? 
huh? What, did you guys rush it? Feels like they rushed it, doesn't it feel like they rushed it? Feels like you rushed it. <laughs> feels rushed, I got a D in high school science, but this feels fast. <laughs> feels fast. <laughs> you guys remember, you guys remember last March when the pandemic started? And they came on the TV and they said, hey guys, everybody just stay inside for two weeks. And we all got tough, we're like, okay. <laughs> You've got two weeks. <laughs> the two weeks came and gone, they're like, a month? Can you give us a month? We're like, watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then they came on TV in May, they're like, I get, guess what guys, 2020's a wash. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, oh, come on. I, I live out in California, man. They took it seriously out there. I think maybe a little too seriously <laughs> because they shut everything down. And, like even the parks, the big open fields, they, they wouldn't allow. Like I remember taking my kids to these two giant soccer fields and nobody's there, but they had like this crime scene tape just going around the whole thing. I got my kids out, I was like, it's okay, we can duck it. One guy gets out of his car, he's like, back inside! Find shelter, men! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I was never too worried about the uh, virus for myself. You know, I, I, I was worried about giving it to people I love and my parents, things like that, but I was never worried about, like, catching it myself because I have great health insurance, you guys. <laughs> I do, I've got the best health insurance. I don't know if you guys have the same thing as me. I got, uh, I got GoFundMe. <laughs> it's amazing, I pay nothing in premiums. <laughs> I pay nothing. I talked to tech support, they said if something goes haywire, I post on Facebook and I get a new kidney. I, that's what they told me. <laughs> I did think, I did think for a minute that maybe, maybe we weren't gonna make it out of this. Uh, until I talked to one of my friends who also believed that the world was ending. And then I was like, oh, never mind, because this guy's an idiot. <laughs> he is. This, this dude is a moron. He, believe, he always thinks the world's ending. He, he thought it was ending in the year 2012. Do you guys remember that debacle? <laughs> With the Mayan calendar? My, my friend was like, he's just looking at everybody. He's like, that's it! And finally, I looked at him, I was like, why? Why do you believe that? He's like, all right, because in the year 2012, the Mayan calendar just stops. I was like, so what? My Chippendales calendar doesn't go past 97. You don't see me freaking out. And the Mayans were crazy people. Do you know they used to sacrifice virgins? Yeah. Why in the world would you sacrifice a virgin? Unless, unless that was their way of weeding out the prudish. <laughs> right, they're like, hey chief, she's not putting out of here. Kill her. <laughs> we do not put up with that in the Mayan culture. <laughs> I grew up in one of those societies, I'd be having sex with every girl I saw. Just come on, baby, this could save your life. Let's go. <laughs> oh no, you don't want to? Well, they're not sacrificing sluts around here. Let's do this. I love, I love how my stupid idiot brain from the point of a male is trying to like find ways to get laid in uh, alternate dimensions. <laughs> Where I get to go back to old world Mayan society. I'm like, I know the line I'm gonna use. <laughs> but I don't need lines to get lucky. I'm married, I don't get lucky. <laughs> She's a sweetheart, man. I love her to death. She's, she's sweet. Uh, she calls me her best friend. <laughs> it's cute, isn't it? She looked at me the other day. She goes, Nick, you know what? You're my best friend. I was like, oh, 
My best friend is Neil. That's weird. That's... What, are you trying to make it awkward? I, we don't play catch together. She and I have never played Nintendo. Best friend, really? Were we best friends when you said I couldn't have a stripper at my bachelor party? Were we? Because all my friends wanted one, but not my best friend. First time she heard that joke, we got home from the comedy club, and she's like, hey. You know that best friend joke? Is that true? I was like, oh, honey, no, no. I had strippers. <laughs> You think she hates that joke? You know who really hates that joke? Is my second best friend, Justin. <laughs> yeah, he's like, who the hell's Neil? <laughs> married an Indiana girl, so we got married in the state of Indiana. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but this is when I found out how, uh, how backwoods Indiana is. <laughs> and I say that I grew up in Nebraska and I went to Indiana. <laughs> I was like, wow, you guys are so far ahead of us. <laughs> and the only reason I say that is because I remember the day that I had to go to the courthouse in Indiana to go get the marriage certificate. And uh, they made me wait there for a half an hour while the guy went into a separate room to do a background check to make sure that we weren't related. <laughs> Excuse me? In three years of dating, I had never once thought, maybe we're related. <laughs> but then when the guy said it and disappeared in the back room, that's all I could think about the entire time. <laughs> that's it. I was just sitting there, just staring at her head like, oh, maybe. <laughs> Dude, three years in, that's a little late to ask the question, are we related, isn't it? That's a little, shouldn't that be question number one on every single dating site? That should be number one, not what are your favorite things to do, what are your preferences, it should just be like, hey, is this your grandpa too? <laughs> Dude, three, three years in, I never thought maybe we're related, uh, and I'm just freaking out. I got just sweat beating down my forehead. My wife looks over at me, she goes, oh, pff, what? <laughs> what, what's wrong with you, Nick? I go, what's wrong with me? If this comes back bad news, not only is the wedding off, but I'm not going to the family reunion either. <laughs> not gonna face Nana after what we've done to each other? <laughs> she tried to hedge her bets. She's like, second cousins doesn't count, right? Is that the crooked hill you want to die on? <laughs> huh. Been married for 12 years now, and um, we got three kids, and that's too many. <laughs> it's too many. Anybody got three or more in here? Yeah. Anybody? What? How, ma how many do you have? You got three? Yeah, it's too many, right? Absolutely. Anybody got more than three? Yeah. How, how many? Who's got the most? Five, way too many. And four is not more than five. Thanks for playing. <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> Who's got more? Five. Four? Has four been said? I was wondering about four. <laughs> Who's got six? Oh my goodness, why? <laughs> Don't stand up, you probably can't. <laughs> Six kids, uh, three is killing me. Three is killing me, and the problem was I wanted two. I wanted two, and there was a time in our lives when we had two. 
There was a time when I had exactly what I wanted, and I would introduce my whole family to people. I was like, hi, my name is Nick Hoff, and this is my complete family of four. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the problem was, is I had two boys. And I didn't know that was a problem. <laughs> I didn't know that was a problem until my wife just started circling me inside the house. It was like she was a shark and there was blood in the water. I was looking around and I was like, what? She goes, oh, we gotta have a girl. I go, oh, no we don't. We don't have to have a girl. Then she touched my leg. I was like, oh, what the hell, we'll give it a shot. That's all it took, man, because guys are stupid. We can be tricked. <laughs> we can be tricked so easily. Because I had put my foot down as the man of the house. We are not having any more kids. She grazed my thigh. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you want, sweetheart. <laughs> so we did. We rolled the dice. And I'm happy to announce that we had a healthy little baby girl. Very excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dude. Dude, when my daughter was born in the hospital, I was so happy, man. I was high-fiving nurses. I spiked the umbilical cord. I was like, ah! <laughs> Looking around at everybody like, ha that's it. <laughs> that's it. We are not having any more kids. We got the pair and a spare. We are good. <laughs> And in the hospital, my wife was holding her, and she's like, oh, she needs a sister. <laughs> it's like, I will smother you with a hospital pillow. What did you just say to me? <laughs> well, she needs a sister. And guys, I would love for her to have a sister. Both my wife and I, we want her to have a sister. But neither one of us want to have a fourth kid. So we've actually been looking into adoption. And I don't know how you guys feel about adoption here. <laughs> See, I know. I know it's a positive thing, like we've taken the classes, I still, in my heart, I feel conflicted about it because I've never, I've never given away a kid before. <laughs> I switched it on you, didn't I? <laughs> you should have seen your faces, you were like, Oh, adoption? God bless his black heart. <laughs> we trusted you. Three kids, man, it's too many. It's too many butts. It's too many butts, that's the brass tax of it. Okay, it's too many. I live in Los Angeles, our place has one bathroom in it. Yeah, both boys are potty training. That means we have four active asses vying for one toilet. That's too many holes for one hole. That's too, look at this, you see that right there? You see that? That's four on one. This isn't some twisted game of soft serve. It doesn't work, you guys. No, no, I had to get up the other day, mid dump to let the four year old take a piss. You ever had to do that? You ever had to get up? Mid-turn, it's horrible! Oh, oh, it's a horrible feel. I was in there, just completely relaxed. It's the only place in the house I get any peace, right? I'm just scrolling through Instagram on my phone. All of a sudden, he comes barreling through the door, sees me sitting on the toilet, he's like... I gotta go! I was like, oh, okay. How's your aim? You got this, we got a triangle down there happening. Can you hit that? I looked down, he's just pointed at my face. I was like, okay. Now, I don't know if you've ever had to get up mid turd It's the most awkward crab walk. Just butt clenched up on your tippy toes. Just like, okay, go ahead, buddy. Oh, cool, peeing on the seat. Appreciate that, that's awesome. He finishes, you're like, okay, go wash your hands. And then you come back over here, but now you gotta hover. 
See, the women know what I'm talking about with a hover. <laughs> Guys, we never learned that skill. We don't have this core strength to pull it off. We just start shaking uncontrollably. <laughs> We'll come back tomorrow. It's too many butts, man. It's too many butts. And my wife and I, my wife and I, we, we are against spanking. We still do it. <laughs> but like, not in public, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe Walmart, but definitely not Target. Like, We're not animals. <laughs> there's, a, there's a weird thing going on with spanking right now. A lot of people aren't spanking their kids. Like, a lot of our friends aren't spanking their kids. And let me say this right off the bat. I get it. Like, that makes sense to me. The logic tracks. Like, we don't hit each other. Why should we hit the smallest people on the planet? <laughs> right? That makes sense. But have you ever met a kid who's never been spanked in his entire life? <laughs> they are worthless turds. <laughs> Horrible, horrible little unchecked terrorists running around biting ankles, right? They're just gnarling on my knee. I'm looking at them. I'm looking at my friend. I'm like, David, you're ruining them. You're ruining your kid. You got to hit him to get him to work. <laughs> I treat him like an old electronic. Just boom, now it's operating. <laughs> no, we, these, we coddle these kids, man. I've come to terms with the fact that I'm raising the future worst generation, okay? I think each generation gets worse and worse, and mine is just gonna be the next worse. That's it, no, you guys think, you guys think millennials are bad? Wait till you get a whiff of the new batch. Yeah, wait till the unspankables grow up. They are gonna be turds. They are gonna suck so hard, we coddle these kids. We kiss their owies. I don't know who started that, but I do it almost every single day. <laughs> almost every day. My, my oldest skinned his knee the other day. He was like, ah, oh, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it. I just ran over like, wong, 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 just <laughs> kissing open wounds. This is what we're doing. <laughs> just blood running down my chin. Wong, 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 just have to butter, buddy, daddy loves you. And let me be honest. I did spank him the other day. He wasn't going to bed. It was like one in the morning. I was like, that's it, buddy. You're getting a spanking. And I did it but I instantly regretted it, because as soon as I did it, he was like, oh, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it. I'm like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Feel like this is sending mixed messages. That <laughs> <laughs> was a... I was a little worried about it. I, I was worried about the whole spanking deal because I, I didn't want to be on the wrong side of history on this one. So I, I decided I was going to ask our pediatrician. And uh, I figured she was going to be on, on the other side of it. I thought she's, you know, probably going to be don't spank. And I asked her, I was like, what do you think about spanking? And she goes, you know what? Spanking is okay as long as you're not mad while you're doing it. If I'm not mad, why am I hitting him? <laughs> Isn't that 10 times worse if I'm like in a good mood while I'm doing it? I mean, that's way creepier, just like, somebody's getting a licking. <laughs> Get over here. It's way creepier, like I'm, I'm trying to correct behavior, not send him to therapy. I like having the boy-girl combo. I think that's fun. Do you have some of e each six kids? Yeah, you got some of each? That's fun. I love, I love that I have the little girl. I can hear them talk to each other and see their differences. I remember when my daughter was really little and I was changing her diaper one day and my oldest son was standing over my shoulder just watching me do it. And he, was just, he wasn't saying anything. He was just standing there quietly. And all of a sudden he just goes, Hey, Dad? You know where she's missing her penis?
is that part of her butt? I was like, I don't know, go ask mom. I don't, I don't know anything, man. The only thing I knew about little girls was what they told me in the hospital after my daughter was born. They, that's the only thing I knew was they, the nurses were like, come over here, dad. Dad, look, dad, pay attention. This is very important. With this one, it's very important that you wipe front to back. It's very important. With this one, you wipe front to back. I was like, actually, that's all of them, right? Right, Nebraska? <laughs> All of us are front to back, right? Like, tell me, none of you guys are using your nuts as a backstop. Please tell me. <laughs> I know it's hard to do the math in the 180. <laughs> but you start at the giblets and work your way back. I don't have a lot of confidence in some of you guys. <laughs> Looking at your faces like, what? Oh, I am front to back, huh? <laughs> Learn something every day. <laughs> and I like the innocence of kids. I think that's fun to hear what they have to say because everything, everything that comes out of their mouth, even if it sounds dirty, it's not because they, they haven't been ruined by the internet yet. So everything's just from an innocent place. I remember I, I was doing some shows at a casino resort and I took my entire family with me and we were hanging out by the pool during the day and I was sitting across from my son and right behind me walked these two ladies with like these string thong bikinis on. And uh, yeah, they, I, they walked behind me. So I didn't, I only saw them for like four or five minutes. Like I didn't get a good, like, <laughs> Be surprised what you can do with sunglasses. <laughs> but I, I, I knew they were right behind me, and, and so I was looking at my son, and I just watched his face go. <laughs> and I looked down at him, I was like, hey, what are you thinking, buddy? And he goes, they need to buy big girl swimsuits. I was like, what? He's like, no, I get it, because sometimes my underwear rides up, and that's when I know I have to get the next size. <laughs> little, little girl's funny, because she, she likes to point out all their differences. You know, sometimes they'll still take a bath together or something. So she'll just announce it, what everybody has. She's like, he has a penis! <laughs> like a very accusatory <laughs> way. <laughs> like she's already a great woman. He has a penis! He has a penis, he has a penis, dad has a penis. And, and she'll even say it when we're not at, at home, you know? Like, we'll be at the grocery store and she's just like, he has a penis! <laughs> she'll just point to people we don't know. She's like, you have a penis! <laughs> like, you have a penis, you have a penis, you have a vulva. She says vulva. She says, you have a vulva! <laughs> this, this lady was like, excuse me? She's like, it's okay, I have a vulva too, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> It's like, hey, what are you doing? She's like, I, I tell him the difference. It's like, he, he has a penis, he's a boy. She has a vulva, she's a girl. I was like, okay, well, hold on, because they're changing it. Like, <laughs> not 100% sure where this one's gonna shake out. <laughs> Don't want to get it wrong, they've already changed math on me. <laughs> Couldn't have done it during the laugh. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till it gets really quiet to open this beer. Shh. Just pulling the ripcord. Was that you, cowboy? What the hell? Oh man. I don't know. I, uh, both boys are potty training right now, which is fine. Um, they, you know, it's, I thought it was gonna be hard to get him to go to the bathroom on the toilet. That's actually easy. The nightmare is the wiping. That is an absolute yeah. nightmare. Yeah. So we, we still insist, we still insist with our kids, like, hey, let us, let, us, let us help you. Let us supervise this. I don't want you repainting the walls. Like, why don't we just, <laughs> right? And so we always insist that, and I don't mind wiping them. I don't mind doing that. I've been doing it their whole life. What I do mind, is the way that they tell me that they're ready to be wiped. 
It really pisses me off. <laughs> Because I'll, I'll be across the place, and all of a sudden, I'll just hear this little voice like, I'm done! <laughs> just like an inbred prince ringing a bell. <laughs> Somebody come service me! <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to tell you guys this story. Uh, when my wife was uh, seven months pregnant, with our little girl. Uh, the boys were driving her nuts. They were, they were just bouncing off the walls and she was having a rough day. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just get them out of your hair. Let me take them to a park or something. So I did, we were gone for a couple hours. And when I came back, my wife was in tears. And I was like, I, whoa, whoa, are you, are you okay? Is everything all right? And she goes, oh Nick, thank God you're back. When you left, I got a little hungry. So I made myself a sandwich and then I, I took a bite and I started to choke and I'm like, oh my God, I'm choking. I'm home alone, nobody's here to help me. I'm, I'm seven months pregnant, I can't even give myself the Heimlich with a chair. <laughs> what would have happened if I just choked to death right here, laid down dead, seven months pregnant. You come up with our two little boys and they see their mother right here dead, seven months pregnant. Well, what would you have done in that moment, Nick? Huh, huh? What would you have done in that moment, huh? You come up with our two little boys and I'm laying here dead. Me dead, you boys, what would you have done? It's like, oh. Oh my God, I would have remarried so fast. <laughs> I'm not raising kids of my own, are you crazy? I would have taken new wife to your funeral, that's how fast. <laughs> you guys took that so much better than she did. She didn't think that was funny at all. <laughs> but I get it. I, I know moms have a hard job. I know that. I know that moms have a hard job. I know that because she tells me every day. <laughs> every single day, I have it harder than you! Right? She'll call me when I'm on the road doing comedy. She'll call me and I'll be like in a hotel room. She's like, what'd you do today? Huh? Oh, did you take a nap? taking that, I got thrown up on, what'd you do? Right? And I used to feel bad about it. I used to feel bad that I got to travel and you know, do something I love, tell jokes, get long naps in, in hotel rooms. I, I used to feel bad about that. And then I realized, it doesn't matter what I do. She would hate me regardless. She would, she would hate me regardless of what I do. Like I, I could go to prison for life. Right? And she would still think I had the easy road. <laughs> right? And she would come visit me, just spite visit me every single day. Just show up with that little piece of glass that we can talk through on the phone. And I'd show up, she'd be like, well, 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 look who it is. <laughs> What'd you do today? Oh, did you read a book? Must be nice. <laughs> huh? What'd you do? Eat three meals you didn't have to prepare? Must be nice. <laughs> What'd you do, have time with yourself, recess a boyfriend? Must be nice. <laughs> you disgust me. Oh yeah? Well, what I wouldn't give to make my own toilet wine. <laughs> she has these tipping points. She's normally great, and then sometimes she just has these tipping points where I know she just has to get out of the house. I know that. I found this out one day when I was, uh, I, I was gone for like five straight days on the road. And when I came back, I had a show in town that night. So I literally just had enough time to like open up the door, drop off my suitcase. And I looked at her, I was like, hey, I love you. I'll see you after the show. And she just slowly started walking toward the door. Just leaves in her hair. <laughs> and she just goes, tell me what the people are wearing. Oh man, you gotta get out of the house. <laughs> I know, I know when she's gotta get out of the house because she started believing everything that she reads on the internet. Yeah, she doesn't have any time to fact check anything, so she just reads an article and she's, there you go, that's true. I was putting coffee mate in my coffee the other day and she looked at me all serious and she goes, you sure you wanna do that? It's like, I think so. Why, did you poison it? She's like, nope. But I read an article the other day that said that Coffee Mate is made from the anal secretions of beavers. 
He's like, oh, you gotta get out of the house. There's no way that's real. There's no way Coffee Mate just has some giant warehouse somewhere filled with beavers. And all of a sudden, the product starts to get low on the shelves and they just send some guy, they're like, hey, Frank, Coffee Mate's getting low, get in there. And he's all leery, he's like, I don't like squeezing their hind ends, they nip at me. You know what the weirdest part about that joke is? She's actually right. Yeah, fake vanilla extract is made from the anal secretions of beaver. That is 100% a true fact. I, you don't believe, who, who in here knows this? Somebody in here knows this. Right there, boom, fact check, right there. I promise, look it up when you get home. I don't know what to tell you. Drink hazelnut, I don't know what to say, okay? I don't know what to do. Sorry to ruin your mornings, you guys. <laughs> but fake vanilla extract in your French vanilla coffee mate is made from beaver secretions, and I don't know who the hell figured that out. <laughs> I don't know who found out that that was delicious in your coffee, like just... <laughs> just well, was it just some rancher just meandering along a stream one day? Right, takes a sip of his coffee, he's just like, oh, tasteless ass coffee. <laughs> Looks like the beaver built another dam. Beaver juice in my <laughs> You guys applaud, but tomorrow morning you'll go get it and you'll be like, oh, damn it. <laughs> hey, do we have any half and half? <laughs> my wife, she, uh, <laughs> I, I know she has it hard, man. I know. And she, she makes fun of me, too. She makes fun of me, too. Tell me if you've ever heard this before. She is insistent, insistent that men, just like women, have a hormonal cycle that they go through on a monthly basis. Have you ever heard this? <laughs> See, I've only ever heard women say this. <laughs> I've only ever heard women say, I've never heard a man be like, hey, fellas, I'm ragging pretty hard. I better head home. <laughs> I've never been at poker night where one guy just casually pushes his chips into the middle and he's just like, oh, it's a heavy flow tonight, gentlemen. <laughs> but my wife is convinced and anytime I'm in a little bit of a bad mood and feeling a little pissy, she'll just look at me and be like, oh, I know what's happening. <laughs> Somebody's on his man, period. <laughs> That's right, Nick. You wouldn't be acting this way if you weren't on your man period. And I'm like, well, first of all, don't invalidate my feelings. <laughs> Everything's valid. The volume's just turned up a bit. And secondly, do we have any chocolate? <laughs> Dude, a man period? Listen, I'm not on my man period. If I were, you would not see me the entire day, okay? That would be the saddest afternoon at all time. I would never leave the bedroom if I were on my period. I would just be laying in my bed naked, just dabbing him with a Kleenex. <laughs> just Enya playing in the background, just... Who can say where the road goes when nobody knows on the outside? That's too gross, isn't it? That was too gross? I don't know where the line is anymore. <laughs> was it too gross? Some people yes, some people no. I don't know, I, at the very least, we can agree that it's a little bit femme to dab it with a Kleenex, right? <laughs> it's a little too delicate, like that, that wouldn't be a man period. Right, we're gonna have to butch it up if it's a man period. 
We don't use Kleenex. We use like brawny paper towels, right? <laughs> And we wouldn't be tender at all with it. We wouldn't be, you know, we'd be like, cough it up, buddy. <laughs> oh, hold your hair back. You got this. <laughs> I don't know. My wife and I, we spent the whole pandemic just watching TV together. That's it. That's all we did. We just got to the bottom of Netflix. That's all we did, and, and man, we watch TV together, and like we watch, I watch HGTV with her, which I hate that channel. <laughs> I hate that channel so bad, man. They're just liars. That's all that is, just liars. They just come out of a three-story house. They're like, hey, we just remodeled this whole place in a half an hour. <laughs> you can do it yourself. <laughs> no, I can't, I tried. <laughs> I tried to fix a light. I got electrocuted seven times. <laughs> We, we retiled our bathroom floor. I, I was trying to fix up our place during the pandemic, you know? I was like doing little things here and there. I was scraping popcorn ceilings to increase square footage. <laughs> we, we retiled the bathroom floor, and this is how I found out that I have not matured at all in my 30s, uh, because it took us two weeks to retile the bathroom floor, and not once during that entire two weeks did I ever get sick of making the joke when my wife asked for more caulk? Not one time. <laughs> Not one time. She'd be, hey, Nick, will you bring me? I'm like, that caulk, you need that caulk in there. <laughs> it's been three days. That's still funny to you? <laughs> Never not funny. It's not funny enough they call it caulk, but they put in a gun. It's a caulk. Do you need my cock gun? <laughs> <laughs> Took us two weeks to retile this bathroom floor, and if you've never retiled a bathroom before, the first thing you have to do is you have to take off the toilet. So I, I took off the toilet, I set that aside, the three-year-old pooped in that. <laughs> I like right away, too. <laughs> I like turn my back, he's like, I'm done. I'm like, I know you're done. I know you're done. I can smell that you're done. So I dealt with that, and then I started to tile. And I started at the doorway, and I was laying down tile, and you work your way toward where the toilet used to be. And then you get as close as you think you need to to the little ring of death. And um, <laughs> you have a little circle where the business goes down. You get as close as you think you need to to that, and then you wait like a day or two for everything to cure. And I waited the proper amount of time. I came back, I put the toilet back on, and there was a huge gap. <laughs> yeah, there was a huge gap between the tile and the toilet. And I was looking at it, I was like, oh, that's not good. My wife walked in, she's like, what the? Oh, nice job. <laughs> Nice job, there's a huge gap. What the hell are we gonna do now? I was like, there's only one thing we can do. Gonna need to cock it, right? <laughs> she was looking at it, she's like, that's way too big of a gap. Cock's not gonna fill that. I was like, they make it in black. It should be fine, I'm pretty sure they make it in black. <laughs> Have we found the line yet? <laughs> Comedy's weird right now, you guys. <laughs> We're living in a weird time in society, man, where you just like, all anybody's doing is just like watching things inside their house, that's it. The whole country's just watching Netflix and pornography inside their house, that's all they're doing. And on Netflix, I've seen what's trending, it's all shows about murder, that's all we're watching, apparently. That's it, you got Making a Murderer, you got Ted Bundy Files, you got World War II in color, ooh, in color now. We got, we got like 13 levels of CSI. We got uh, Law and Order, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Ooh, I like it when the victims are special. <laughs> That's it. That's all society's doing is watching pornography and shows about death, and yet somehow we're still easily offended at jokes. How is that the cross-section of humanity? <laughs> How is this where we've ended up as a society? <laughs> it's so weird. That's it, man.
We're just inwardly gross and outwardly appalled. That's all we're doing. <laughs> That's it, like some of you will be going home after the show tonight. You'll be walking to your car outside the theater and you'll be like, you know what, he's right. We never did see season two of Making a Murder. We should get back on that. And in the same breath, you'll be like, but can you believe what that gentleman said about the man period? I have a good mind to write the mayor. That's it, man. We spent, we spent time watching TV and I got back I got back into video games, which I know is super nerdy and stupid. Oh, we got a couple gamers out there. <laughs> By the way, video games have become amazing, but they are super nerdy. Like, I realized that. Like, my buddy was like, oh, get the system. We can play during the pandemic. And I, so I, I bought the system, and I bought the, the nerdy headset where I can talk to him like I'm a trucker going down. <laughs> and I, I, I'm doing things that I think are very cool. Like, I get emotionally invested in these video games. I, I buy in. But the problem is, I bought the headset that only had the one ear hole, and the other one, I can hear everything happening inside my place. So the whole time I'm playing and thinking I'm very cool, I can hear my wife cutting me down as a man. <laughs> Just <laughs> letting me have it inside. The, like, I'm doing, I'm playing wartime video games. I'm sniping people from off of rooftops. I'm trying to use the military language. I'm like, watch out, fellas, you got a bogey on your rear. She's like, look out, guys, you've got a bogey on your rear. <laughs> hey, knock it off. I got hit the other day. I'm like, I'm hit, I'm hit. She's like, help me, help me. <laughs> Somebody kiss my boo-boo. Suppose no thanks are in order, I just killed Hitler. <laughs> she, she always talks to me after I play games, like I play Madden football, and I'll just play for hours at a time, and she'll just confront me. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Wait, let me ask you, let me ask you, do you honestly think that you are Super Bowl MVP quarterback? Do you really think that? And I was like, hey, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. By the way, back to back. Back to back, okay? <laughs> Show me a little respect around here. <laughs> I, got, I got the Batman video game. Have you played that? You get to walk around as the Dark Knight just kicking ass. And you're just walking around, you're like, nothing can stop the Batman. But eventually you like run into the end of the world that you don't know was there, right? You don't see it on the map, but it's just all of a sudden you can't go any further. You're just running around kicking ass and all of a sudden you're like, Guess Batman can't go south. <laughs> but I, li I like video games, man, because they're an escapist opportunity. You know, a lot like this is. It's a chance to forget about things and you escape, because I still have fantasies. I still have all kinds of fantasies. You have any fantasies right there, man? Yeah? Yeah, like, I wish I could fly. You ever wish you could fly? Hell yeah, when was the last time you tried? <laughs> Nobody tries anything anymore. <laughs> come on, dude, you gotta get out there. I, I go out once a month and just give it hell. Just, come on! Because <laughs> you don't know, maybe that mutant gene is just like dormant for the first 30 years of your life. I think after the show, you should give it a try, dude. I really do. I really think, by the way, I think you all should after the show. I think you should all go out there and try to fly. There's enough of us in here. I'm pretty sure there's a pretty good shot. One of us will take off. <laughs> And listen, I get it. Listen, if you're too, if you're too ashamed or scared or like self-conscious to try to fly after the show, like here's the perfect time to try to fly. Next time you're breaking up with someone. <laughs> that is the perfect time to try to fly. Because it doesn't matter what the results is, it's win-win either way. <laughs> right? If you don't end up flying that time, but you're breaking up with this girl and she's devastated, she's crying at the end of it, you know? She, you're breaking her heart. And you're like, you know what? It's not you, it's me. Da, 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 da! <laughs> She's just looking over at you like, oh, it is him. <laughs> She's drying her eyes. She doesn't even feel bad. Feels like she dodged a bullet there. <laughs> right? But, but, maybe today's your day. 
Maybe today's the day you're going to take off, and you're breaking up with her, and you know what? She didn't treat you right anyway. And so you're like, you know what? I think we should see other people. And you just, boom! <laughs> see ya, <you>, bitch! <laughs> She's like, Steve could fly? Why did we drive to Denver? Still have these fantasies, man. I, I think all guys have them. I think all guys think they're tough. And most of us aren't. Some people are. Some people are tough. And the rest of us are just living in a fantasy life inside our head. Like, like sometimes I think I just like pass a guy in the street and I don't like his look. I'm just like, could kick that guy's ass. <laughs> I always fantasize about telling people off in male restrooms at the airports. Because I got news for you, four out of five guys aren't washing their hands after the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, four out of five guys. I fact-checked that. You know how? I sat in a bathroom for a half hour during a layover in O'Hare. Yeah, I sat in there and I was just making check marks. And I was just silently making check marks of all the guys that weren't... And, and, and I was really quiet, but in my head, I was calling every single one of them out. In my head, I was like, what are you doing? Are you going to... Go wash your hands! Go wash your hands, you gross sack of crap! In reality, I'm quiet, but in my head, I'm like, go wash your hands! <laughs> right? And in my head, they talk back. They're like, what are you going to do about it? I was like, you'll find out what I'm going to do about it. They're like, what, are you going to kick my ass? I was like, no, because you got to wash your hands. They're dirty. Wash up. <laughs> I have all these fantasies, man. I... You ever get an Amber Alert text on your phone? You ever get one of those? Yeah, what do you do? You get an Amber Alert text, what do you do? Nothing, monster. <laughs> monster, a kid's been abducted, someone needs you. You do nothing, you just delete the text. I don't, I get up off the couch, I'm on the case. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, low level vigilante. Hang in there, Timmy, I'm coming for you, buddy. <laughs> Right? No, in reality, I'm on the couch, but in my head, I'm out there. In my head, I'm, I'm memorizing license plates. What is it, a brown Nissan Altima? Pervert, yeah, of course he drives a brown Nissan Altima. And I'm out there, and I just want to be caught for a day. Don't you want to be caught for a day, right? All the power, none of the training. <laughs> right? And in reality, I'm on the couch, but in my head, I'm out there. I'm out there. They're looking for him. I'm like, where is he? Where is he? And then in your mind, you don't mess up, right? You catch up to that brown Altima. And you're like, there he is. Yep, the license plate checks out. You call 911. Beep, boop, boop. Yeah, that Amber Alert text you sent out, I'm on his tail. They're like, great job. Fall back. You're like, nope, I'm taking the lead on this one. <laughs> right? You got to go up there, and then you got to do a pit maneuver. Haven't you always wanted to do a pit maneuver? <laughs> Right? I watch cops, you just get right up on their tail and then you nudge them with your bumper. Like, I don't care about my bumper, just nudge them. Just boom. Their car spins out and the pervert takes off because he's a coward. You get out of your car, you check on Timmy, you're like, hey man, you okay? He's like, no, 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 go, go, son of a bitch. So now, <laughs> now you're on foot. And you're running and you're running and you're chasing him down and you catch up to him because you're blazing speed, right? Doesn't matter that you're almost 40, you can still run <laughs> super fast. Just, just chase him down and then you do a form tackle, right? You do a form tackle and then you do a citizen's arrest. Haven't you always wanted to do a citizen's arrest? <laughs> Hell yeah. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. If you could not afford an attorney, the state will provide you with one. That's all I know, because that's all they ever say on TV. <laughs> Can't wait till the next time you guys get an Amber Alert text. You're like, should I get out? No. <laughs> If I'm gonna be a cop, I'm gonna want coffee, and there's French vanilla, that's all we have. <laughs> so we just, my wife and I, all we did is we just sat there and we watched TV. And, and sometimes I'd tweet something out from the toilet. <laughs> and I got in trouble, I got in trouble during the pandemic because uh, I said something that I thought was funny. And, uh, and then a bunch of people let me know that I wasn't. And, uh, 
like, like right away. And let me tell me if I, I was over my overstepping here. Like, I all I wrote. And by the way, let me preface this by saying I have the utmost respect for doctors and nurses. I think they do an amazing job, and I think they work very hard at what they do, and it's amazing. I do. I absolutely think that. Okay? Absolutely, 100% think that, but all I said was I think if you die in the hospital, you shouldn't have to pay. That's all I said. <laughs> That's it. And so many people were like, we work hard! We're doing the best we can! And I was like, I just think that'd be a good consolation prize, right? <laughs> like, I understood you tried, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> you fell short this time. <laughs> I don't think I should have to pay for that. <laughs> I, I think that'd be kind of a fun little thing for you know, everybody around, just like you hear, beep, beep, free! <laughs> I need, I need things to be free, man. In case my wife touches my leg again. I need it, man. Kids are expensive. Kids are expensive. We had to, we have three car seats. We had to buy uh, the oldest one a new one the other day uh, because uh, apparently now in America you have to be in a car seat till you're a hundred pounds. It's a little excessive, isn't it? A hundred pounds? Like I was a little kid growing up. I didn't weigh 100 pounds when I turned 16, you guys. Yeah, I'd have been driving to high school in a booster seat. <laughs> Be out there trying to find a prom date, like, what's up, ladies? You girls hungry? You want some animal crackers or something? <laughs> Try and make it look tough in my five-point harness? Tilt it back, swirl my sippy cup. <laughs> you ladies get hungry, you let me know. I've got a chicken nugget in here somewhere. <laughs> it wasn't like that when I was growing up in the 80s in the, in the Midwest. That wasn't what safety looked like. I distinctly remember riding in the back of my dad's truck, pretending like I was surfing. <laughs> right, while he was in the driver's seat trying to toss me like, He'd just take a hard left, I'd yard ah! Just crank my head on the wheel well as I went tumbling out the back like, oh, that was a good one, Dad. I thought you were going right, but you went left. Oh, man, I am leaking. Oh. Oh, that's okay. I don't need a brain. I'll be a comedian. Now, now the wife and I have kids, we just watch TV. <laughs> that's it, and uh, that's cool, but TV is starting to get me in a little bit of trouble, you guys. Like, let me know if this is happening to any of you fellas out there. Like, anytime my wife and I are watching some show together, and the guy in the show starts to cheat on the girl in the show, my wife is always looking over at me. <laughs> you have something you'd like to say? We were watching something the other day, and the guy in the show turns to the girl, and he says, well, I don't know if you know this, but all men want threesomes. I was like, what the hell? All men want threesomes? Why would a property brother say that? Why would that ever come up? <laughs> all men want threesomes? I'm sitting here watching this with my wife, and I just feel her head turn. <laughs> start to bore a hole into the side of my face. I look over, I'm like, what? She goes, huh. Do you? Do you want a threesome? And I knew this wasn't like an invitation or anything. <laughs> but I also knew I couldn't say no because the guy on TV just said, all guys. What, am I not a guy? I'll tell you what, I thought faster than I've ever thought in my entire life. That's exactly what I said to her right there when she goes, do you want a threesome? I go, uh, 
if I could have two of you. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, dude. Man. She pitched that up. I was like, get that out of here. Oh, in that moment, I was so proud of myself, you guys. <laughs> And then in the next moment, I remembered, she's a twin. <laughs> We're trying to teach these kids right. We're trying to raise them right together. We think, I think it's very important. We always pray at the dinner table. I think that's important if that's something you believe in. We always pray before each meal. But it's weird because my wife and I, we had never prayed in front of each other before. So I found out we do it differently. Like, I always pray to God, and my wife always prays to Jesus, which I think is weird. <laughs> she thinks that's weird. I finally asked her, I was like, why do you pray to Jesus instead of God? She goes, what's the difference? I go, what's the difference? <laughs> when you pray to Jesus, it's kind of like, come on, man. Put your supervisor on the phone. I don't need Jesus picking up, making small talk. I got real problems. Go get daddy. <laughs> I don't know. My hope, my hope coming out of this pandemic is that we, uh, we come out of it tighter as a country than we went in. I hope, I hope that happens. I really do. I really hope every single person in this country learns something from this and has a little more understanding for people. Because, you know, going in, it felt, we felt fractured. It was like everybody was yelling at each other. You watch the news or social media, and everybody's just bickering back and forth. And you think, oh, man, we don't agree at all. But I got to tell you, I travel to like 30, 35 states a year. I meet people from all different walks of life. We are more alike than we are different. I'll tell you that much right now. Yeah. 99.9% of people just want what's best for them, their family, and their neighbor, and that's it. That's it. Most of 99% of us are somewhere in the middle on most things. The problem is you have crazy people in this country. That's a huge problem because they're all yelling at each other from the far ends on every single topic, and we're left in the middle like going, oh, I guess I got to pick a side. No, you don't. Keep it in the middle, you guys. Keep it in the middle. You don't. We don't have to fight amongst each other. Stop listening to the insane people, and they'll stop talking. They'll stop getting their platform. Just keep it in, on the tracks. And I'll give you the perfect example. I'll give you the perfect example. Huge issue in this country, gun control. And there aren't just two sides. There are three. You have most of us in the middle, and then you've got wing nuts on the far ends. <laughs> You've got most of us in the middle where we're like, you know what, for the most part, guns are okay, but yeah, we should probably have a few restrictions, right? Like if a guy runs into a gun store mad and he's like, I need a gun right now. Like, hurry, she's getting away. I don't know, maybe we count backwards from 10 with that guy. But then you got the crazy people on each side. You got the crazy people way on the left. They're like, that's it. Can't have guns anymore. In fact, to make America safe, we gotta go get guns, put them in a pile, melt them down. That's how we make America safe. Okay. <laughs> so this person's plan for peace is to go take guns away from people who have guns. <laughs> Let me know if that's a peaceful process. <laughs> Let me know when you're wrangling the AK out of Jessup's fingers if he's going quietly. Right? But then you got the crazy people way on the other side that are like, everybody needs a gun. <laughs> everybody needs a gun. You going to kindergarten, Timmy? Don't forget your handgun, buddy. Don't forget that. <laughs> And these are the crazy people that think we need those power weapons to defend ourselves against the government. That's cute. If we ever have to fight the United States government, they are going to beat the hell out of us. And they won't even need weapons to do it. They'll just turn off our Wi-Fi. We'll all be outside like, what the hell? <laughs> Fine, take me then. I don't want to live if I can't watch porn on the toilet. <laughs> but 
I do agree that the government's gotten too big for their britches, and they don't have our best interest at heart. So we do need some level of protection against them. So, so, here's what I recommend. We, the people of the United States of America, as a group, to defend ourselves against the government, we get one nuke that's just ours. <laughs> Right? The military can have the rest, but we get one shiny warhead. And we just get to plant it underneath Congress and just hire somebody that's got like six kids with their finger hovering <laughs> right over the button. And she's just staring them down. <laughs> you better do what we want you to! But you can't just trust her, like she might go rogue. So you gotta have somebody behind her with like a rocket launcher pointed at her. Yeah, checks and balances, that's how we'll set this bad boy up. Yeah. And it'll just be a long line of gradually de-escalating weapons like that. Like you got rocket launcher guy behind her, and behind rocket launcher guy you got bazooka guy, and it just keeps going down. You got like shotgun guy, handgun guy, nail gun guy, cock gun guy. You could be the cock gun guy, that could be you. And it just keeps going down like knife guy, shank guy, blow dart guy. <laughs> All the way down, like brass knuckles, bare knuckles, bitch slap guy. <laughs> All the way down until eventually it's like noogie guy, wedgie guy, like swirly guy, like Indian burn guy, cause that like fart cupping guy who's just chucking his farts. All the way down till just eventually at the end of the line, it's just my dad standing there and he's like, I'm not mad but I'm disappointed. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. This means the world to me. Thank you guys. I really, really am glad you're here. Stacks on the ship near the shoreline Welcome you home when you arrive When you're turning around with the tide You know I'll be there to say goodbye And I can't tell if we're really improving Or just fooling around Cause we can't stop moving We'll keep trying till we finally get it If we settle for failure we might regret it I don't know if we're even improving But we're comfortable now mean something We'll keep trying till we finally get it If we fall on our faces and say that it's time to give up Well done.